Hello everyone, myself, I am Dr. Valet. I am here once again with you all to discuss some of the important questions from Unit 7. So today the topic that we will be discussing is about nervous system. And I am sure you all are you know, taking the most of out of these sessions and you all are enjoying these sessions and you all are practicing more and more questions from the different topics that we are discussing. Okay. So today we are discussing about nervous system. So first let us go through the types of questions that are asked. Now if you find the questions type, so statement based questions are most often asked from nervous system. Okay, Either they can ask from action potential statement based questions, they can ask from the different neuroglial cells Okay, statement based questions, they can ask uh, some statement based questions can even be related to some scenario they might have given okay some disease conditions and then they might ask correct and incorrect ones so these are how statement based questions are asked and they are most often numerical type questions now recently we have seen that they have started asking numerical type questions from nervous system okay so that is why i have mentioned sometimes they are asked and today we will try to see what type of no numerical questions they are asking from nervous system next match the following i would say it is rarely asked but yes they have asked and we will also try to discuss one of the match the following type of questions now coming to graph based questions now if we scan through the previous year questions we usually don't find graph based questions related to nervous system okay but it's not that they cannot ask because there are graphs right there are graphs related to action potential Okay, so that is where uh, the scenario can arise where in future they might ask a graph based question. So we should be prepared for we should be prepared for graph based questions as well. Okay, so now let's see the type of questions. So we will see some of them. So first one is a statement based question related to the the cells. Okay, that is the neuroglial cells. So the question says following are the statements made about major functions of some of the neuroglia in normal condition a oligodendrocytes help maintain potassium level and contribute to the blood brain barrier b microglia are capable of movement and phagocytosis of pathogens and damaged tissue c astrocytes produce the myelin sheath to electrically insulate neurons of the central nervous system d ependymal cells which are ciliated are involved in circulation of cerebrospinal fluid so the question is which of the following options represents the combination of all incorrect statements so this is very important okay now in, in when we are rushing through the question we forget to see that it is written incorrect and we tend to select the correct statements but remember students it is asking about incorrect statements let us go through the statements so here you need to know the characteristic of each and every neuroglial cells then only you will be able to solve this question so it's all depending on how well you remember their characteristic so oligodendrocytes help maintain potassium level and contribute to blood brain barrier no oligodendrocytes are a part of the neuroglial cells of central nervous system and they are not related to blood brain barrier okay they help to maintain the myelin sheath for the neurons of central nervous system so that is why a is incorrect b microglia are capable of movement and phagocytosis of pathogens and damaged tissue definitely it is correct because they are capable microglial cells they are also a part of uh, central nervous system neuroglial cells so b is correct astrocytes produce the myelin sheath yes so in this case what they have said is astrocyte produce the myelin sheath to electrically insulate the neurons of the central nervous system now here as i said oligodendrocytes forms the myelin sheath astrocyte they do not form the myelin sheath okay but what they do is they form the blood brain barrier okay so that is why this statement again will be incorrect clear so c is incorrect d let's check about ependymal cells so they are ciliated are involved in circulation of cerebrospinal fluid this is exactly the uh, functions of ependymal cells okay they are ciliated 
and they line the ventricles okay through which the cerebrospinal fluid flows so d is correct now we have to find the incorrect statements so accordingly we can see that b is correct d is correct so what is not correct is a and c so our answer will be option 2 a and c clear so that is how you have to be very clear with the statements you should know their functions okay so this is one of the figure you can see over here where you can see the different types of cells of the central nervous system okay neuroglial cells of central nervous system so these are astrocytes again astrocytes are of two type so one is protoplasmic the other one is fibrous okay then you can see these are the microglial cells that are phagocytic in nature then we can see the oligodendrocytes you can see they are forming the myelin sheath for the neurons of central nervous system okay so they form the myelin sheath right and then here lies the ependymal cells so they have this microvilli structure okay and they line the ventricles okay so same thing you should know each and every characteristic so i'll quickly go through the explanation so processes of oligodendrocytes are responsible for forming and maintaining the myelin sheath around central nervous system axis so a and c is incorrect b is correct as microglia function as phagocytes d is correct as ependymal cells are arranged in a single layer that has microvilli and cilia these cells line the ventricles of the brain and central canal of the spinal cord clear now let's see the next question so this is a very recent question match the following type of questions so the sensory nerve fibers in column x and the sensory receptors connected to different sensory nerves column y are given below so x and y where x has sensory nerve fiber y has sensory receptor so which of the following options represent the correct match between column x and column y so we have to just match it and we have to find the right answer okay now here again it depends on your memory how well you have memorized the different nerve fibers and the receptors they are associated with so i'll show you this table okay so very important try to remember this from exam point of view so you can see these nerve fibers have different numbers okay and what type of fibers they are and their origin so 1a or the fiber is alpha okay so a is for alpha so proprioceptors they are position sensors they can sense any change in position so they receive innervation via type 1a okay so their receptor is muscle spindle right so you can see 1a will be muscle spindle so 1a will match with 3 okay so a with 3 means third one should be the answer right so even if one you match you easily get the right answer next is 1b so that is associated with the golgi tendon organ 2 with muscle spindle or flower spray ending touch pressures okay so 1b is muscle spindle so b will match with sorry this b will match with 4 golgi tendon organ okay c is 2 that will match with the muscle spindle clear so 2 is muscle spindle flower spray ending so exactly this is what is written over here the sensory receptor and we will check for the th uh, three number so it is pain and cold receptor sometimes it is associated with touch receptors so these fibers are large and myelinated this 1a 1b and 2 with rapid conduction velocities then mechanoreceptor innervation is type 2 and 3 okay where mechanical changes can be uh, you know sensed okay so for them we have mechanoreceptor so that is for 2 and 3 so here free nerve endings and cold sensory fibers right the so for 3 it will match with pain and cold receptors so 3 matches that is d with 2 so the right answer is option 3 so the question is simple just that you need to memorize them carefully okay so without making any mistakes and you know the, they have not much confused the options also so even if you know one you can easily find the right answer okay 
So remember, in order of decreasing diameter and velocity, proprioceptors are A alpha, A beta, mechanoreceptors A beta, A delta, nociceptors and thermoreceptors. So nociceptors are those receptors that can sense any kind of damage, injury. Okay, thermoreceptors change in temperature. So it is A delta C fibers. Okay. So that is the fourth one. Number four with pain, temperature and other receptors. So that was about the match the following type of question. Let's see this numerical question. It says the time taken by synaptic vesicles to travel from the soma of a motor neuron in the spinal cord to its neuromuscular junction in a person's foot by fast axonal transport will be like how much time we have to calculate. Okay. So it can be 5 to 10 seconds. 10 to 15 minutes, 5 to 6 hours or 2 to 3 days. Now let us see how to solve this particular question. Now for this you should know what is the speed. Okay. Now for fast axonal transport, like if you imagine this is a neuron. Okay. These are the dendrites, cell body. Okay. So this is written it is what type of movement? Fast axonal transport. Okay. Now, fast axonal transport can be of two types. It can either be anterogate or it can be retrograde. Anterogate means from cell body towards these axon terminals. Okay. And retrograde will be in the opposite direction. Okay. That is from the axon terminals towards the cell body. Alright. So, here for fast axonal transport, it is capable of moving materials at a distance of around 200 to 400 mm per day. So, if you convert it, it is around 40 centimeter. It takes one day. It is because it is moving in two directions. So, it will be, you know, if you calculate around 80 centimeter. Okay. So, at this rate, how much days it will take? So, on an average, we can say it will take around two days. Right. So, that is why if you see the answer over here, okay, it will be the fourth option. That is 2 to 3 days. Okay. So, the right answer for this question, it is going to be fourth one. That is 2 to 3 days. Clear? Because anterogate is in both the direction. Fast axonal transport will be in both direction. It can be anterogate also. It can be retrograde also. Okay. So, it is very important that you know these terms carefully. So, if you see fast axonal transport, it is bidirectional. It is ATP dependent. It is associated with microtubules. Okay, it will use dynein and kinesin. So basically, Golgi derived vesicles will use this fast axonal transport, lysosomes, mitochondrial movement, okay, structural elements of ER. Slow axonal transport is only unidirectional. Okay, so that is why we are calculating for 80 centimeter where it will take around two days. So the right answer is going to be option four. Slow axonal transport is ATP independent. By sliding it occurs polymerizing and protein interacting. So basically slow axonal transport is in one direction. Okay, only in anterogator in the forward direction. For neurofilaments, microfilaments, microtubules, they use the cytosolic protein complexes. Okay, so it is very important that you know what are the different types of fast axonal transport, what is anterogate, what is retrograde. Okay, so in this way you can solve this numerical based question that is asked from nervous system so that is all for today so i will leave here with this thought that inspiration does exist but it must find you working as said by pablo picasso thank you everyone